Bothell, Washington, exclusively at WrestlingObserver.com. You're listening to The Brian and Vinny Show with your hosts, Brian Alvarez and Big Vinny V. Hey, what do you think about that? That's my, uh, that's my raw siren. It's the best I could come up with there. Hey, it's the Brian Vinny Show, everybody. It is. That's right, March 8, 2022. Figure 4, online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. Brian Alvarez, Vince Verhey, Craig Proper Jr., Granny here. And we are uncooked. Uncut. And uncensored. Hey, we fucking got it right on the first try without even practicing. That's right. Holy smokes. Granny, what's going on? It's still pretty loud here. Yeah, well, I was screaming. Hopefully it's uh, a little bit better now. <laughs> there was a siren going off. Yeah, there's a siren going normal. crazy. What's going on, everybody? Look at Craig. Look at Vinny. Yeah, the magic here is that uh, Vinny was the smartest one because he actually thought of growing a beard and then shaving a mustache so he could look exactly like Rob Bartlett. That was a plan. Yeah, I, I just didn't even think about it like an idiot. But I did get a suit and, uh, and my aviators. And then uh, Craig is the weirdest one of all because he uh, he sh- he has hair everywhere except the mustache. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not bothered that time. Excellent. Sports. Can't wait to see it. Oh man, it's gonna be great, Granny. Do you have your aviators on in your suit? Nope. No. Well, you know, I uh, uh, just as a quick aside, I uh, had a. I, I'm a much smaller than I was back in the past. I mm. used to be, you know, fat, and I lost weight. And so I had a whole bunch of, uh, like, 10 years ago, I went and bought a bunch of, of nice suits. And then, like, absolutely none of them fit me. Yeah. And so literally on Friday, I took a giant bag of old suits. I took them all to Goodwill. And then on Saturday, I realized, God damn it, I need a suit. So I literally Ding went basket. right back to the Goodwill, and I think I rebought one of my suits for $13. <laughs> that's what I'm wearing right now. Because I spare no expense for this show, everybody. So there you go. I dug this blazer out of the back of the closet where it's been probably since I moved into that apartment in uh, 2013. And I thought, man, this is going to be way too tight. It's flowing on me like a cape. Bro, you look exactly like Rob Bartlett. Yeah, thank you. It's actually uh, uncanny. All right, I win then. All right, you win the contest. Yeah. But listen, we have another contest here at everybody because this is our, our Ode to Rob Bartlett edition of the Brian and Vinny Show, because we have been reviewing all of the Raw shows. We began with Raw 1, which we actually reviewed uh, twice in the history of this show. We reviewed it several years ago, and then we uh, we reviewed it again uh, a few months ago. And uh, suffice to say, when we reviewed Raw 1 the first time and the second time, not big fans of Rob Bartlett, right? Uh, as I recall, we were kind of harsh on him. Yeah. I was very harsh on him. You were, you were actually, I think, much harsher than I was. I was probably a dick, if we're being honest. Sure. I was a real dick. Uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is we, uh, you know, we kept watching. We didn't give up. And uh, I think for me, I turned the corner on Rob Bartlett the day that Doink was appearing on the program. This actually, uh, how many Raws have there been? Like 1,500? This remains one of my favorite moments in the history of Raw. <laughs> Doink shows up on the screen, and uh, he's a clown, of course. And uh, Rob Bartlett, it, with absolute, utter sincerity, says, It's Dork! And he said it with such sincerity that the booker of wor- the World Wrestling Federation, the owner of the company, responded with, Yes, Dork! And there was a brief pause, and then Vince realized, that the fucking clown's name was not Dork, it was Doink. I cried with laughter at the Dork Doink incident on Raw. And then Vinny turned the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really did. It was what, like Raw 5 or something like that? Uh, 5 or 6 when yes. he, uh, Vince is unavailable, and so Rob goes incognito yes. as Vince McMahon, doing a Vince McMahon impression <laughs> yes. for 60 straight minutes, Yes, driving the only force... In the careers of Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan that united them. That got them on the same page. They were teaming up to conspire to make sure he That's never called right. another match. That's right. That's awesome. Uh, fantastic. Yes, Granny. Uh, uh, this Bob Bartlett, is that a wrestler? Uh, Rob Bartlett, Granny. Rob? Huh? Rob Bartlett. Is that- I thought that was your homework, Granny. Yeah, you were supposed to watch it. You were supposed to, you were supposed to tell us this week. We we gave you the task of of, uh, of I know, but I must have looked up the wrong one. No, cuz Rob Bartlett's not a wrestler. You you I'm, I'm pretty oh, sure you okay. looked up that's the right one. I, that's what I asked you if he okay. was a wrestler. 
No, he was not a wrestler. He oh. very briefly, Granny, for about three months there in the early 90s, was the announcer on pro wrestling yes. TV shows. He was a raw announcer, but he was not a wrestler. Mm-mm. Although at times he did take a beating. I think twice. True. Yeah. Once or twice. Well, that's interesting, Granny. I can't wait to hear what you've discovered about Rob Bartlett. So what we're doing here as part of the Ode to Rob Bartlett here on the uh, Granny segment is uh, we're having a contest. And so on Granny's Facebook, uh, fans were tasked with writing a short poem, an ode to Rob Bartlett, poetry. And at the same time, I tasked our uh, very creative fans with uh, uh, songs, a uh, 30-second or less MP3, a musical ode to Rob Bartlett. So that's what we're going to do during this segment, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up with whatever Granny's got this week and, and whatever whatever report she has written in her uh, investigations into Rob Bartlett. Does that sound good? That works for me. Right? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Vinny. So Vinny's going to start with uh, Facebook here because I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to, uh, you know... Search for these songs? I'm going to find these songs, yes. So, so go ahead, Vinny. Granny... Re- read a couple of poems here. As Granny writes, Ode to Rob Bartlett, and then in brackets, not parentheses, poetry contest. I got a few. Ryan Mosley. How long is this? Eh, it's a little on the long side. Let me see if we can come back to that one. Well, I got to find these songs, so I'll, I'll let him slide for this one. All right, Ryan Mosley. Long before WWE's commentary team was Michael Cole... D- Cold, because he put Michael Cole in there. The product was hot. The announcers were pure gold. A savage, a madman, and before there was a brain, there was a hero named Rob who had quite a short reign. Wow. From Zuma to Coleman, his jokes had fallen flat. Thirteen weeks is all we had to enjoy him behind the mat. (laughs) Horrible. We're off to a horrible start. Who was that? Um, there's more. Ryan Mosley. No, that's enough. All right. Was, Ryan Mosley. It's supposed to be like four to six lines, right? I told you it was long. Okay. Like well, one more thing. I, found the, I found the song, right. so we can we can move on to that. All right. All right uh, this is from uh, Adam here. Adam's Ode to Rob Bartlett. Here we go. Rob Bartlett is the man. He tried the best he can. Thirteen weeks was not the plan But fourteen was too much for McMahon Yo, everybody disliked his standout style But he had great impressions that made you smile His Vinny Mac voice was a solid five stars But Gorilla and Savage wanted to hit him with the car That's Rob Who's beating that guy? That was outstanding Holy smokes Who was that now? That was, uh, I believe, uh, Adam. Adam Adam That'll be easy to remember for this week, especially. The first song by the first man. That's right. Yeah. Is it that, Adam? Adam? That would be news. It would actually be news if it was the uh, the first man, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. This is from Ryan. Ryan here. His ode to Rob Bartlett. Didn't work. <clears throat> yeah. he sent. You know what he did? He actually wrote here in MP4 form. Oh. Didn't I say MP3? Sure you did. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Ryan, but you uh, you screwed that up, brother. All right, so oh, he he sent me another link, so I guess you realize he made a big mistake. All right, here we go. And now he's got no audio. Anything else? Yeah, this is a. Uh... <laughs> I'm actually very upset that I can't get the audio to this thing. What the heck's going on here? Let's try one more. Okay. Let's... All right, here we go. If you want... Vince on the new. Woo! What Rob Biden's going to do to you, he'd be running to his remote as fast as two feet could carry him. His program sucked with him. If it's on the new room. So uh, I couldn't put that video on the screen here, but uh, for those of you wondering, he's wearing uh, sh- uh, basketball shorts, no shirt. <laughs> Hairy chest. Excellent. And uh, it appears to be a jacket over it. So, uh, so is, is it Joel Gertner? Uh, be thankful you didn't see the, yeah. the video. It's not Joel Gertner. Can, well, as a, a fan of garbage, <laughs> that was some high-level garbage, and I enjoyed it. All right. Uh, this one here is from Emilio, and then we'll do a couple of the poems and go back to the songs, all right? Emilio right. here. Monday night raw and be my wife. 
What? <laughs> wow. In, in an odd that fashion. Was nice and clear. Man, that was awesome. <laughs> Why don't we have clear? Remember the old days of the show where we do song contests and they were horrible? Do you need to play that second one again? (laughs) Well, I didn't count. That wasn't really a song, but uh, that was Emilio. I'm very impressed by that one. Would you say that that was better or worse than Adams? Adams is still the best. You think Adams is the best still? All right. All right, let's do a couple of the poems, Vinny. All right. uh, I'm looking through these and trying to find the, the good ones, and I don't think there are any, so I'll just go in order. Okay. Aaron Hatovi. When I read the name Rob Bartlett, I did have a brief brain fartlet. Oh, come on. For I was sure they said Rob Feinstein. LOL, I'll pretend you said 18. Vinny, you oh. read that on the air? I told you this. They're all like that, Brian. There's no good ones, No, dude. I promise there's not another one like that. Read another one, Vinny, and I'm going back to the songs. Chris Lowe. Mr. Rob Bartlett, we hardly knew ye, but please don't come back. We have Pat McAfee. I disagree. Hey, uh, Granny, can you back away from that mic just a little bit? Because uh, your headphones are blasting into that microphone. Let's do a song. This is from uh, Wes. Wes the Fitting has sent this song in. An ode to Rob Bartlett. Bartlett, y'all really hated when he started But that Vince impression will have us missing when he's absent Kept us laughing, can only have high hopes That Raw 13 sees him going out on a high note It's 29 years later and Vince still loses all the fun commentators Do not give this company a single ounce of leeway Give me Vinny V, Happy Corbin and Bartlett in a three-way oh. Winner what? gets the Vegas gimmick There he go that's from uh, West of the Fitting right there. Another another fine tune. All right, Vinny, let's hear one of these poems. Joe Del Buso, a top fan. Barlets come and barlets go, but Raw will be garbage forever. Oh, that was horrible. Oh, I told you. My goodness. Back away from that mic just a little bit there, Granny, while we're, while we're reading these poetry or these poems. Back Read another one, Vinny. How come, like, all the songs are putting over Rob, but all of the poems are burying him? I don't know. All right. Read another one. S. Doyle Granger. Rob told some jokes, but came off as no seducer. His stint was short. He couldn't coax a job as a producer. <laughs> I think we need to go back to the songs. Songs are definitely the high note here. All right. Uh, Dagan here. Brian, Vinny, uh, Craig, Granny, top tier, Twitch homies. This one's for you. Uh, He says, uh, goodbye, Rob Bartlett. Goodbye, Rob Bartlett. We're never going to miss you on Raw. Your intensity comes on your casino. Let's see your downfall. Goodbye, Rob Bartlett. You never were well received. Your horrible Elvis Presley impression makes you look like a geek. Oh, man. Pretty good. Not bad. Not as good as Adam, though. I think the dig and need a little bit of that auto tune that uh, that other one guy had. Right? Yeah, a little. A little bit, yeah. Do you know, Granny, that uh, on the Raw show, Rob Bartlett once dressed up as your favorite act of all time, Elvis. Did you know that? Uh, no. Yeah, he once dressed up as Elvis. You should have watched that show with us. All right, Vinny, let's try another one. Alistair, Alistair Hamilton. All of the women scream, Rob! Many an egg was ovulated. Brian looks on confused and says, this sure is discombobulated. <laughs> hey, at least it rhymed. It rhymed. He rhymed, he rhymed ovulated with discombobulated. Yeah, it rhymed. I appreciate that, actually. That's probably the best poem so far. All right, Liam here has got a song. Here we go. Here comes the commentator, Rob Bartlett. He's a great imitator of Vince McMahon. Excuses bad behavior to much of man. And now it's time Raw is in the can. That's pretty impressive, dude. I appreciate the effort. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. What do you think of these so far, Granny? That one was good. All right, all right, all right. All right, another uh, poem, Vinny. John Pincus. Though we wanted Hot Rod, we got this Rob. 
some radio geek who took an announcing job. But tonight we salute him and exclaim, hurrah, for Rob never had to watch even a two-hour Raw. <laughs> That's true. That's true. He got it a lot better than the rest of us did, watching this three-hour show every week. All right, let's go to Brandon here. There's this man and macho man, and wait, I see another man. His name is Rob Bartlett, to whom we bid farewell. Hey, hurrah, hurrah, the great Monday night of Raw. And suddenly as he appears, soon he will be gone. Hurrah, hurrah, our hearts can only tell. The ode to Rob Bartlett, to whom we bid farewell. Hey! That was really that was good. Tremendous. Wow. Kind of a whiskey Who in the jar vibe. I like that one. I think I, I think I'm voting for Brandon. Yeah, definitely. All you, right, you're still on Adam, Vinny. No, I, 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 I like Brandon a lot. Oh too, man. man, Brandon's in the lead. Brandon is in the lead, and I don't know how many we have left. Now, let's do this one by Grayson. Let's keep up with his songs because those they're uh, doing better. Yeah, those poems aren't really no. doing it for me. 1993, right. watching Raw in USA. Hear what the announcers say. With Aldous McMahon and the Macho Man, some comedian, not quite a bohemian, sometimes a chameleon, playing Elvis Presley to amuse us. Now I understand that you were set up to fail, and you might have gotten some hate mail. You had the sharpness of a snail. It was uncut, wow. uncooked, and uncensored. Most matches were a turd. <laughs> okay. So I'm thinking we need to go back to those poems again. <laughs> hang on, hang it's on. just me. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you. I can't judge the output, but the idea behind that was genius. <laughs> okay. I don't know if we've mentioned if I've mentioned this recently, but uh, <laughs> the song he he took the he wrote his own words, but the music is an old song by. Don McLean called Vincent. Oh. And it's one of my favorites. Wow, really? How so he that? may have been blatantly sucking up to me. Mm, well, I but I, I think he's, you can't win with one vote out of three. I guess not. I, I think no. the, the, the one right before that probably was still better. All right. Well, let's but get... I applaud the, 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 the idea, the theory. The theory was perfect. The execution was lacking. You know, this next guy is, uh, I don't know if I should say, uh, how about this? I won't say his first name, but his last name is Lugosi. All right. Yeah, I believe he's the uh, son of Dracula. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Raw episodes, you're still alive. 11, 12, 13. That's your last episode of Raw. Sweet dreams, Rob Bartlett. Goodbye, Rob Bartlett. Goodbye, Rob Bartlett. Goodbye. Lugosi, you just sucked the life out of me, so to speak. <laughs> All right, back to the poems. Holy smokes, read a poem. Michael Bernstein. Why was he even on Raw? Perhaps it was luck of the draw. One way or another, you best believe, brother, he did the best Vince you ever saw. That's true. That's the best poem so far, for sure. Yeah. All right, that's all the songs, by the way. Oh, so uh, out on a high note, that would, did you say that was all the poems too? That's the best poems. So oh, that's far. the best poems. Okay, more we, if do, you we want. don't. No, we don't need to do any more. All right, they were terrible. Yeah, but the songs were excellent. So I think that we can agree that it's going to come down to either uh, Adam or uh, Brandon. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Try believe. try playing both one more time and I, we'll I, decide. That's fair. All right, if you're on uh, Twitch, YouTube, I'll let you uh, vote as well. Uh, but uh, here we go. the The first one here was from uh, what I say. Adam. Adam, where'd he go? He's at the top. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Here we go. Rob Bartlett is the man. He tried the best he can. 13 weeks was not the plan. But 14 was too much for McMahon. Yo, everybody disliked his standout style, but he had great impressions that made you smile. His Vinnie Mac voice was a solid five stars, but Gorilla and Savage wanted to hit him with the car. That's right. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. All right, uh, then we've got, uh, let's see. Uh, what did I say, Brandon? Mm-hmm. All right, here is Brandon. There's this man and macho man, and wait, I see another man. His name is Rob Bartlett, to whom we bid farewell. Hey, hurrah, hurrah, the great Monday night of Raw. And suddenly, as he appears, soon he will be gone. Hurrah, 
Hurrah, our hearts can only tell The ode to Rob Bartlett To whom we bid farewell Hey! What do you think, everybody? That's the best one. You think that's the best one, Granny? You like that one? I like that one. All righty. Actually, hold on a minute. I may have... Uh... We have one more! Oh. You ready for one more, everybody? It's anticlimactic, but yeah. Well, yeah, I just realized I had one more. And uh, uh, according to this thing right here, it is a Shakespearean sonnet. Oh, goodness. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Tis a curious thing, this dude called Rob. There's no words to describe his cluelessness. A chubby, bloated, imbecilic slob whose time on Raw was simply just a mess. More disturbing than Heenan dressed in drag. Pettengill didn't suck as much as him. To the fans, Bartlett's just a punching bag, and yet he's never been inside a gym. Awful from the very first episode, his comments were dumb and plain judgmental. Whose idea was it to hire this fat chode? Wow, that's one big butted <laughs> Oriental. Been no one worse than Bartlett ever since, but he really did a hell of a Vince. Holy smokes! That was that was a sonnet. That was a sonnet, all right. That makes it art. Excuse me, is this Rob Bartlett? <clears throat> Guiltiest hey! Oh, look who's here on the show, everybody! There's a star here. Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today. How you doing, Rob? I'm good, man. I can't see you guys. I can only see myself, which oh. is not really a well, pleasant thing. We all look just like you. <laughs> Actually, we all do. Yes. Just, just imagine yourself times uh, times four. Oh, uh, I, I would really like to see that, but I, I, I don't know what to say about this outpouring of of disgust and love simultaneously <laughs> between the music and the poems. I mean, I mean, to actually be proposed to in song was a beautiful thing. <laughs> it, it is, it is uh, quite incredible that we did, uh, we did a song contest and a poetry contest. And I believe every poem was negative and every yep. song was positive. Including mine, by the way. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> must be something to be said for these creative people. But thank you, Emilio. I mean, uh, I you've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now, and um, lucky fella, I'm uh, I'm I'm moist. I'll just say that oh, yeah. I'm, I'm moist. I need a pants mint at this point. <laughs> That's how excited I am. Um, I don't know what to say. This is just way too much attention and and too many accolades for for one boy to have in one night. <laughs> Well, Rob, what, what do you what do you remember from your days at Monday Night Raw as you as you relive these Raw episodes? I don't think you probably ever relived them. I mean, oh, uh, believe me, every night I relive them. Oh. Every night, I just over and over, <clears throat> I, I torture myself with. Uh, I mean, it's just it was a great time. I I had a blast. Oh, good. Uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I worked with some of the greatest people on the planet. I mean. Bobby the Brain Heenan was just one of the greatest guys, and and Randy, two of the greatest guys you'd ever want to meet, could not be more supportive, uh, and they could not be more talented. Heenan, by the way, was a real funny motherfucker. He really was. I mean, he could have done a stand-up act. Matter of fact, I tried to encourage um, him and and Gorilla to do a like an Abbott and Costello thing together because they were great. They were gold together, the two of them. Um, so, but it was just great. I mean, Kevin Dunn, the producer, was just a, a terrific guy. And Vince, I mean, you got to give Vince a lot of credit for for taking that leap, you know, for for taking that risk. I mean, he's the P.T. Barnum of our age. He's a guy who really knows how to work the public he knows his product he knows his audience and you know he, he took a chance i just I, I wish i had been better well you know the the thing that we've noticed watching those shows is that uh man vince looked like he was having the time of his life he looked like he was having fun and he'd be laughing and there was like so much creativity in those early runs the, the matches weren't necessarily you know all that good there were, there were some bad and boring matches but uh, as far as like you know Vince on commentary and you you three your your Vince impression that week he was gone is is Vinny's favorite and uh, best thing I ever saw yeah what do you what do you remember from that day 
that that was one of the things that just kind of came to me. I mean, he would, I had heard, I guess, the, the previous week that he wasn't going to be there, and I got this stupid idea, which actually was a better idea than than showing up as Elvis and everyone thinking I was trying to do Honky Tonk Man. Um, <laughs> was uh, I said, let me let me try and do him. So I went to the the, the makeup person. Uh, I think her name is Sharon. I said, do you think you can you know make me look like Vince? I said, I'll get a tux and I'll, I'll get some shoulder pads and, you know, I'll, I'll, can you do the hair and can you give me the big Vince lips? And and she did. And uh, I, st- I stood there with holding the microphone with the one hand behind my back and mm-hmm. I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the, the tone of the voice, you know. So <laughs> the entire hour, much to the consternation of, of Bobby and, and Gorilla, was... <laughs> You still got it. (laughs) You still got it. And it was uh, it was just a lot a lot of fun. And when it was over, the crew went nuts because nobody had ever tried, I guess, or attempted or had the balls to to make fun of the boss. And um, the following week, I show up to the Manhattan Center, and they it was like one of the ante rooms where the like the green room where they would have the the buffet, you know, the the craft service of the the grilled chicken and steamed vegetables and you know, a big bowl full of Ico Pro bars. And, oh. um, <laughs> um, I think uh, Undertaker was squatting in a corner of the room the way he did every single time he was he was on the show, staring straight ahead for at least an hour before air. Just like, I don't know if he was meditating or what, but it was really, really scary. Not as scary as Bam Bam Bigelow, who'd be in the other corner, like chewing on car batteries. Um, but all of a sudden, the whole crew comes in and everyone's like, kind of looking around they're all kind of like not looking at me and i'm wondering something's going on you know and uh everybody's kind of talking whatever and there's a little tension and vince comes into the room and you could hear a pin drop and he turns and he goes bartlett you're fired (laughs) and everybody laughed it was like a lot a lot of fun um uh, the following week i show up to do the show and there's nobody there. Oh no! They had, I guess, I don't know if they they had, they must have been up at the. I don't remember because it was so long ago. But they must have gone up to the Mid Hudson Civic Center mm-hmm. uh, without telling me. But there was a guy with a camera, and I think there's this a shot, if I'm remembering it correctly, a shot of me in the in the empty house. <laughs> with the microphone and it was his way of getting back at me. Um, so so how did the the end of the how did the end of the run come about? How did Raw 13 come about? When did you know that this was going to be it for Rob Bartlett on this show? After the um Luna Vachon sensational sherry when I got my clothes ripped off incident happened and I thought I was I had really like broken through a ceiling at that point because all of a sudden the fans were like all excited. Um, you know, they're all lined up. All of a sudden they wanted my autograph. I said, wow, I got something going now. I got something great. And uh, Vince was not not all that pleased with how it all went down. And and um, I, I don't know if he thought I did too much or, or didn't do enough or whatever it was. But I think it was just apparent to everybody that it was just not going to work. You know, um, and so I think it was after after 13, I uh, I, I called the, the, that Tuesday morning. I called Kevin Dunn. I said, I said, look, man, I said, this has been great. I love you guys, but I really don't think this is working. And, you know, I was most concerned about my son, who, by the way, is who turned me on to you guys. Um, we got to put him over. Yeah. Oh, Bartlett yeah. Junior. I, yeah. Uh, Sean, Sean, uh, I was concerned about how Sean was going to feel, you know, because he had gotten to meet all the guys and, you know, it was like a big deal. He got to hold the belt and Madison Square Garden. And, you know, th- th- that was another moment that, uh, that they never taped it, I don't think, which w- it's another story, which we can get into if we have time. But I said this, I said, Sean, I said, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to be doing raw anymore. Do you mind? And uh, eight years old, he says, you know, Dad. It really wasn't a great fit. <laughs> wow. So, wow. Even he knew. So it was clear. So, uh, you know, Kevin was like disappointed. You know, he's like, man, I wish I could keep you on. Because 
I had pitched a couple of ideas. I had written a pilot for a wrestling sitcom called The Turnbuckles, um, <laughs> where where the bed was an actual ring. Um, you know, and the whole family that they would all constantly, you know, the, the way the normal sitcom would go, but they would always be wrestling. They would just, no matter what they were talking about, you know, doing homework, or whatever they would be, you know, giving each other pile drivers and, and shit. And then I had another idea to do almost like a Saturday night live using the wrestlers. And I had written a sketch for Yokozuna, which by the way, when I said Yokozuma, that was supposed to have been a joke, but everyone just assumed I had no idea who the guy's name was. Um, Dude, his own but, manager used to keep calling him Yokozuma. Mr. Fuji well, kept calling him Yokozuma. Right. Well, that was, that was what I was trying to kind of like feed into that. But yeah. I don't think anybody really got that, but, uh, but I, you know, Yokozuna was, you know, the, the, the butt but um, boom, of my, the very first words I said on raw, which is, well, Vince, that's one big butted Oriental and that is you know, still hanging, you know, in, in the air decades later, the Manhattan center decades later. Um, so I had written this sketch for Yokozuma at the time. There was a, a car commercial. Uh, I think it was for Cadillac where they dropped a ball bearing on a Cadillac and it rolled over all the contours of the, of the oh, car. Yeah. And, I, and I wrote this sketch where you dropped a, a, <laughs> a ball bearing on Yokozuna and it went, went all the way around his body. And then finally went down and back into the back part of his diaper. And then he, you know, it's like st gets like startled, whatever, and then I jump on his back and he trots away as though I'd started the car. So I was like a bunch of that. Kevin was disappointed. He wanted to do all that stuff, and uh, but uh, it was a great experiment. I mean, the the, the way it came about. I had done a benefit for Connecticut Special Olympics, and that's one of the things you got to hand it to Vince. That they do more work for char charity, especially children's charities. I've never been associated with any organization that does as much for charity as as uh, as WWF at the time or, or WWE now. And and um, he was in the audience, and I was doing. You know, I did my stand up, and I did a, an auction, and he was wearing a three piece velour peach colored suit, and I did about twenty minutes on the suit. Um, <laughs> I just murdered him, just like you know, Vince. That's a really nice suit. Does it come in any heterosexual colors? I mean, it was like really. I just hammered the hell out of him, and and two days later, I get a phone call. Um, from INS's uh, assistant saying, you know, Vince McMahon called and wants you to call him. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I have to pay the piper. He says, uh, Bartlett, how would you like to be on live TV every Monday night? And that was it. Um, the rest is I, history. The like rest is, as they say, history. Um, it's just... It was a great time. I mean, it's just I, I do look fondly about the. It was just a crazy, crazy situation. I mean, I wouldn't know what to expect, you know, until the the, the pre-show meeting. I mean, literally fifteen minutes before air, I would find out what was going on. Well, quite frankly, Rob, I don't think much has changed <laughs> in uh, the, the following thirty years. <laughs> In fact, I think there would have been some shows you would have been on the air. You would have found out what was going on. <laughs> so yeah, just, uh, but it was great. I mean, the people were great, and um, and it was you know it was fun. How, how could you not you know, how could you not get into that that circus atmosphere? You know, it was just it was just crazy. Do you, you ever know? hear from them nowadays? No, never, uh, man. No, unfortunately, God. I've never been invited to any of the anniversaries. I've never, I mean, I mean, I actually go to Madison Square Garden to buy tickets, and they won't let me. I mean, oh, it's just, <laughs> horrible. Um, that that the, the Madison Square Garden uh, thing was, I thought, one of my better moments. Um, giant. Oh, by the way, I just want to take credit for something. I named Friar Ferguson. Mm. No, I did. That was my idea. I named Friar Ferguson. This guy was going to wrestle that night. They still hadn't given him a name, oh so <laughs> I, I named Friar Ferguson. And oh. just before air, I leaned over and I said, "You got to be careful of that robe because you know you flip the wrong way, everybody's going to see, you know, the Holy Grail." And um, and so when he was in the ring, he actually <laughs> He did. He started slashing yeah. the uh, the I was like, What yeah. in the hell's yeah. going on here? So yeah. you're responsible for Friar Ferguson. 
Uh, well, I was responsible for the name. Well, um, I mean, the whole gimmick. So, th- so they had a gimmick for the guy, but not a name. They had a name, but no gimmick, and uh, obviously no storyline or you know, uh, no any any kind of thought as to what his moves were going to be. But um, I think it might have been a last minute substitution. How uh, about that? But. Madison Square Garden was supposed to have been, I was dreaming this was going to be my, my big debut. You know, I was going to be sitting ringside. You know, my son brought his friends, got to go backstage, took his picture with Randy and and Virgil and, you know, everybody. And, and uh, so we get the tickets and like uh, our seats are two rows from the ceiling. <laughs> I've had that happen. And so I go, because I'd already told the kids, you know, oh, it's going to be great guys. We're going to be, you know, we're going to be ringside, you know, you know, Mr. Bartlett's a big shot of the WWF. And uh, I go down and go back to I said, Vince, I said, what's the story? I said, Bartlett, go back to your sheet. I said, well, I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to follow spot you all the way down to the ring. <laughs> it's like the walk of shame. <laughs> <laughs> so I was supposed to interview Giant Gonzalez and his manager, Harvey Whippleman. Whippleman. Yes. Uh, Giant Gonzalez, you know, by the way, that, that wasn't his real hair. I don't know if you know that. Oh. Um, Thank you for uh, <laughs> yeah. and, um, Those weren't his real pubes? No. <laughs> wow. You know, it might have been. Uh, I guess that's true. We don't know what uh, was glued on there. So I did this, this you know, Whippleman was, John Gonzalez didn't speak, obviously, and, and Harvey Whippleman was talking about, you know, the scum of the earth where it lived in New York City. And, you know, I mean, I entered the ring to cacophonous booze and um uh, whippleman says oh the scum of humanity here in new york city and you know, all of you new yorkers are just trash and i do this big almost like patriotic speech about new york is the center of the freaking world and the greatest people in the world the greatest city in the world and giant gonzalez grabs me like on the shoulder and does a spock pinch and forces <laughs> me to my knees and uh I then did what was my patented finishing move. Um, I fled the ring in fear. Yes, um, yes. And uh, went went back to my seat, uh, and uh, got some looks from Sean's, you know, buddies. But you know, it was what it was. It wasn't the triumphant uh, debut that I had anticipated. You know, Rob, you may not know this, but uh, I in fact wrestled for many, many years. And, really? Uh, yes, I did. And what, uh, what was your character? That <laughs> was that was me. It A was, short, angry man. Yeah, not very successful. Short but anyway, yes, yeah, short, angry, uh, uh, you know, skinny guy. But anyway, the point of this is. You were not a wrestler, Rob, and no. uh, you know you you uh, we just watched that confrontation when you were in the middle of Sherry and Luna Vachon, and I can uh-huh. tell you that uh, as a trained wrestler for a long, long time, I would not have wanted to be there. I would have been scared half to death with these two women beating the shit out of each other and me in the middle because they uh-huh. were no joke. I I I tugged the nugget when I was there. I mean, I was. <laughs> Definitely, it was not. I was really, really scared. I mean, that, that wasn't acting. I, when they started going at each other, it was like, holy shit, what have I gotten myself into? And they'll hit you. Oh, yeah, they did. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, they, they were did. beating they the hell did. out of you. You know, McMahon just kind of subtly drops it in conversation in the pre, pre-show pre meeting. He says, yeah, uh, Luna Masi, you're going to interview a little smart on a sensational show. You're going to come out. They're going to get into a fight. You're going to try to break it up, and they're going to rip your clothes off. I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, of course, I didn't know who Luna Vachon and, and Sensational Sherry were. And so I'm thinking, huh, oh, two babes, cat fight, <laughs> tearing my clothes off. All right, just starting to get some perks here on the, this gig with the WWF. And then Luna Vachon came out and it was, okay. And then <laughs> Sherry came out with, you know, her her triple Fs or whatever. I mean, that woman had a chest. And um and they start going at it and it was it was I feared for my life. I, I, I definitely I I don't think I've ever been that scared. <laughs> I mean I had a pulmonary embolism on the streets of New York. I wasn't as scared as I was in the middle of Luna Vajan and Sensational Sherry. So let's talk a little bit about nowadays. What do you got going on? I'm doing a cameo, you know, like yeah. everybody uh, in show business. Yes, yes. One cameo. I know you do one. Brian. I do. Says, yes. I'll, 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 I'll hire you. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had so much fun as doing these cameos. Let me tell you. They are people, a lot of fun, aren't they? Yeah. People. It's, well, it's, people just want me to bury their friends. 
And so they like put a list of stupid things their friends have done, and I just cut promos on them, and I get paid. It's the best job I think I've ever had. It's great. I mean, I I, I have broken broken up with people for people. Wow. Like, <laughs> wow. I haven't got that one yet. This girl this girl wanted to break up with her boyfriend and and hired me to do it uh, via cameo. And um, I've done, uh, you know, birthdays and anniversaries. So there was a, a character I used to do on, on IMS Blind, Mississippi, White Boy, Pick Feets Dupree, a, a blues singer. So I'll write an original blues song for whoever the in- attendee is and, um, you know, get, get as much information. as. But it's a lot of fun. You know, it's a great, great chance to connect. So any of you uh, old, original, OG, raw fans, uh if you you want to do something special for another OG Raw fan, you find me on Cameo. I'm just I'm kind of flopping around, you know. I, uh, I did a, a gig the other night. It was a private party, which is, you know, stand-up now. It's it's slowly coming back, but it's not where it was sure. even when it was. Um, I did a, a one-man show up in Connecticut. I got, I'm going up to my old alma mater, my old college, to teach some uh, – Teach some acting classes. Um, you know, did a little TV, did a movie part here and there. Just trying to lay low. Mm. You know, try <laughs> we, to we've all been laying low for a while here. It's, it's no, I know. Problem. It's true. It's very, very true. Rob Bartlett Radio Comedy Hour. The Rob Barley Radio Comedy Hour. Thank you very much for, yes. for reminding me of that. The reason why I forget is because I, I, I'm due for a new episode. I, I don't think I've done a new episode in like a month. Um, that started out as uh, supposed to be a, a combination of like Saturday Night Live and the old Jack Benny radio shows where people would stand in front of the microphones with the scripts and do sketches and whatnot. And we had a whole troop of character you know, players. And, uh, you know, I write all the sketches with this uh, buddy of mine, uh, Andrew Smith, who used to be the head writer at SNL. And uh, we got the, the, the whole cast and we were doing it live on Facebook Um uh, video streaming, and then we would put the audio up on on uh, podcast, and then later on, this was at uh, WABC. They had a little performance space, and then they gave me an hour on Saturday nights uh, to do it for a while uh, from the studio. We weren't doing the video thing anymore, and then uh, they said they, they couldn't do that anymore because of the, something to do with the insurance. We couldn't have that many people in the studio. Some bullshit story. They basically just didn't want me you know, in the building anymore. And so uh, basically it's just me now doing it in my kitchen. Huh. But um, one of the episodes, I, I kind of go through a brief you know, history of my my time on Raw, you know, wrestling with myself. Uh but it's fun. I do some interviews, comedians, you know, Jackie the Joke Man, you know, old pals of mine. Um, and then usually a theme and do sketches and song parodies and shit like that. Just something to keep busy because, you know, there's just so much fucking Netflix you can watch. That's true. <laughs> so at The Robio, T-H-E-R-O-B-I-O, at The Robio is that's the, right. the Twitter handle. And looks like there you got links for everything. So I think that's the yeah, place folks uh, can go to. Robbie O Radio Comedy Hour on Instagram. And yep, yep. I'm still trying to figure out how to do TikTok so it looks like something. Dude. Uh, not just, you know. We're too old me. for this TikTok thing, Rob. I, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, I tried to do the dance from Peacemaker. I just can't. It's just, <laughs> at this age, with this body, I just can't do it. So, I have to, kudos to John Cena, man. <laughs> yeah, when you got a body like his, I mean, a lot of dances you can pull off. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, well, you know, but how great is he on that show, man? That is such Amazing. a great show. Best show. I love that show. Well, yeah, I was one. I, was, I binged that, and, and eighteen eighty three was my other guilty pleasure, just uh, just for Sam Elliott's mustache. I think that that sh- the mustache should actually get its own credit. It should it should get like a lifetime achievement award. What yes, get, actually, <laughs> and Sam could accept it for. His mustache. Yeah, on behalf of his mustache. Well, listen, Rob, I want to thank you for doing the show, and I really appreciate you coming on here and, and being a good sport. Ooh. And I know you that's, probably that's heard it. some of these reviews before. Your poor son has heard our review of Raw 1 twice now, this poor kid. Uh, he's probably my well, age, actually, but uh, he's going well, He's almost 40, so. Oh, know. he's just a um, youngster. Yeah, he was, he was eight. When I was doing Raw, so, uh, but he's still he's a huge wrestling fan, and he's a huge fan of you guys. So, he's the one who told me. He said, "You know, they're doing every episode of Raw 
Uh, That's right. He's he's responsible for all of this here, everybody. So if you if you should... appreciate this show. But one of the guys t- has turned the corner on you. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, we both did eventually. Eventually, we all did. Yeah, yes. eventually, we you all did. did. It, it, wow. uh, and it's kind of sad because, like, at the beginning, you know, if you were going to be fired, it should have been, like, after the first one. But then, like, well, after a true. while, you were you were actually adding, like, the Vince McMahon episode is, is you know, it'll never get old. Favorite. And then, you know, getting there and getting beat up by Luna and Sherry. And it, it seriously did feel like right when you were kind of getting into a groove, that's when they fired you. Yeah, it was just. What can you, know, you do? It just, it just kept missing. You know, it was like one of those things where it just kind of never really gelled. It's like when I showed up as Elvis, I probably should have told him I was going to be showing up as Elvis. <laughs> that was the night that they had um, Dork hit me in the face with the pie. Um, so you know, five minutes into my Elvis, for the rest of the show, I had fucking whipped cream on my face so no one could tell who I was. It just, you know. Well, we all, yeah, we all dressed up as you tonight, and Vinny was uh, thinking about uh, dressing up as you with the pie. Yes. Yeah. You know, you but I didn't want him to mess picture. the studio up. I wish I could see you guys. You got to take a picture. I want to well, see Well, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll talk to my producer and I'll get a link for the entire show and I'll send you the whole thing. Oh, that'd can, be awesome. Yeah, you can uh, watch I, it. I will treasure it because this was, I got to say, this is quite a tribute. I, I don't think I've ever been so humbled by uh, that, that this outpouring of. Love and disdain simultaneously. Yeah, I'll make sure you get a list of all those poems too, Rob. I'll make oh, sure I absolutely. send those over tomorrow. Oh, definitely. I'm going to print those out and make a book. Like yes. a keepsake. I'll be scrapbooking yes. tomorrow with the, you know, especially the uh, <laughs> the song fit marriage was proposed by yeah. Amelia. Was I married. will send you the I will send you the uh, the songs. You can you can treasure those. Oh man, down the road. I, just, I don't know what to say. You got a great show, guys. You really, really do. Well, I. I appreciate it. You know, it's just, uh, uh, you know, the only other show I've done besides you is the old school wrestling, those guys over in Ireland. Um, um, so, you know, and out of both of them, you know, you you were absolutely um, one of them, and I, uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> we, we, you know, I've heard that a lot. You were absolutely one of them, you guys. So I, <laughs> I appreciate that. But, hey, I really do appreciate it. Thanks again. And uh, I know it's like almost 1 o'clock there, so we're going to let you go. We're going to review this Raw 13, and then I'll get this uh, link <laughs> over to you so now. you can enjoy well, it. Yeah. It is I sad. I don't have to go. I can. I can. You want to stick around for it? I'll stick around. What, are you kidding me? All righty. Hey, Granny, you still there? No, I'm here. <laughs> Poor Granny. Hey, Granny, you don't sound too happy. Yeah, Granny's been sitting here the whole time wondering what's going on. No, that's just fine because I think I had the wrong. <laughs> I think I had the wrong guy. Well, Rob what Bartlett? did you learn about the the Rob Bartlett that you you uh, you checked out? What what facts did you? Uh... Well, he was an explorer way back when. That's not him. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I tell I me mean, what. No, it's really. No, I believe really you. What did he? Because what did he explore? Tell me more. Wait a minute. First time I looked, I I thought it was a Bob Bartlett. So I looked it up, and it said he was born in Seattle, Washington. <laughs> and then I found this other one. I don't know. It had his picture and everything, and hmm. he was an explorer from wow. Newfoundland. <laughs> an explorer from on... Newfoundland. Wow. Uh, Bob and, and he was Ra- And what did he discover? Yeah, I wondered. I wondered why you guys uh, picked him. <laughs> that would be He's strange. <laughs> they still wonder why they picked did, me. Did you? Uh, when was this guy born? Did you get like his birth date or anything like that? What year he was born in? Yeah, he was. He was born August fifteenth, eighteen seventy five. And so, died and April 28, nineteen forty six. He died in. Okay, so, but you thought he might be on the show this week. Well, I couldn't figure out why you guys picked him because he was an explorer. He was with Perry. They were going to go to the North Pole. Yeah, and really. They got within. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was so, just, just troubling really... to me that you know Granny Googles my name and, and the only one who pops up is this fucking explorer. <laughs> yeah, who went to the I North know, Pole? It, he's the only one that came up Holy. besides the other Bob. I suppose it's possible you spelled it wrong. Is that is that possible, Granny? Oh. No, she said nope. she, she does. She searched for Bob Bartlett. Bob, I right. see, I see. Ah, that's what it was, yeah. Robert Bartlett. Rob, <laughs> yeah, Rob Bartlett. If you search Rob, it's it's okay. this kind gentleman Sorry we're talking to right now. Sorry about that, but well, that's my that it's actually, it's, it's my stage name. My, my real name is Biff Wilson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. 
You ever wander the streets okay. uh, exploring anything, uh, Rob? Uh, yeah. Okay. Here and there, you know, Craig. Don't worry about it. There, there's a tie. Uh, you know, some some adult establishments. Hey, Granny, you know. did you uh, want to pick a winner? Who did we decide was the winner here? Uh, Brandon on the side. Brandon. Brandon. Don't forget to pay him. Uh, yeah, it's don't my responsibility this time. All right, I'll pay him. Don't worry. Brandon, you're the winner. Brian. Congratulations. What does he win? I'll send him some money. Really? Brian. <laughs> sure. <laughs> not not a lot, but some. <laughs> but I guess I can think. And the guest doesn't get any. Actually, you know what? I'm going to send him. I'm going to send him this suit. What is this? Well, I mean, we could talk, but I mean, for <laughs> journalistic purposes, I'm not supposed to pay you. <laughs> but I can, you know. But I, hey, this suit, like, I don't need this suit, Brandon. So if you want it, it's yours. Well, I was a suit, but I'll say right this up, Brian. It's in there on Monday night. Uh huh. Yep. Uncooked. Uncut. And uncensored. Hey, good job. Under rehearsed. Under rehearsed, that's right. <laughs> Unplanned. Hey, uh, Granny, anything else before you go today? Yes, I have two things. Okay. One, I never did get a hold of last week's contest winner, Matthews Cameron. So if you're listening, get a hold of me. And I just wanted to make one remark about uh, Friday night's uh, show. Sammy lost his championship after only a week to hmm. Ricochet. Ricochet. To Ricochet. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So that's it for today. All right, Granny. You guys go ahead and you guys go ahead and have fun. All right. Sounds well, like thanks, Granny. Having... Yeah, we're having a good time okay. here. I, I think Granny okay. discovered a new, very stereotypical racist gimmick. Oh, get out of here, Craig. Red five, Granny. Thanks for being on the show. Every week, Rob, ninety two years old. Can you believe it? Uh, bless her. That's so great. Yeah. She reviews. Exploiting the elderly. You should be <laughs> proud of yourself. Well, actually, I do pay her, but yeah, she reviews. Uh, she has to watch these shows and review them. Can you believe that? That's that's cruel and unusual punishment. It, it essentially is there. All right, Vinny, let's get going on this Raw 13 show. We'll see if uh, we'll see what uh, Rob's got to add here to all this. All right, we watched WWF Raw 13, April 19th, 1993. It opens with Money Incorporated and Beverly Brothers doing a promo. I'm paraphrasing, but Money Incorporated says, they won't bankrupt us. And the Beverly say, we're going to bankrupt them. <laughs> <laughs> what a stipulation. <laughs> you must forfeit all, all holdings. Yeah. <laughs> You're broke now. Yeah, you must go bankrupt if you lose this match. I hadn't thought of that. But our opener. Oh, what an opener. Mm. Razor Ramon versus Virgil. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> so they start off. And they're having a technical battle. And Virgil is out grappling him. And Razor has to keep going to the ropes. And this goes on for a long time. And the announcers are discussing Virgil's game plan. Whether he should be more aggressive with his takedowns. And suddenly, out of nowhere, Virgil, the technical wizard, fucks up a schoolboy to an impossible degree. <laughs> you know what's funny is I was watching it and, and you know, you you... You defer to blaming Virgil, right? You do. Because, you know, every time he has a match, it's horrible. But uh, I was watching this spot, and uh, I think it might have actually been Scott Hall's fault. Because Virgil was clearly going for something, and uh, and Scott Hall was actually very much like Rob Bartlett at uh, MSG. He was fleeing. He was trying to flee <laughs> from this move. And, and poor Virgil just, like, he got all tangled up and looked like an idiot. So I actually think it might have been Razor's fault. Not that talking? I am absolving Virgil of all blame in this match because uh, it was quite terrible. But I think that might not have been his fault. Are you talking about the schoolboy where he got tangled up in the ropes? I'm not sure which one it was. I there don't was, remember. There was, there one, was a couple of them. Yeah, there was one where, where Hall was just fleeing, like, I don't want any part of this weird move. All I know is... They call this movie Schoolboy for a reason. <laughs> School children executed regularly. Sure, well, yeah. These two professional performers fucked it up. Yeah. It's going on way too long. Razor one with a razor's edge. You know, um, there's a reason that uh, DiBiase never replaced Virgil. And I think I realized why. Why is that? It's matches like this. That's why. Oh, well, I think you think <laughs> we'd re replace it with someone better. No. Maybe he didn't need replacing. Maybe it was just bad, that horrible. Hmm. So the announcers run down the card, and our friend, Rob Bartlett, is supposed to interview Bret Hart, but he basically refuses, terrified that Bret will beat him up like the women did last week. God, I don't blame you. That's fair. Although, to be fair, if Bret Hart would have beaten you up, you wouldn't have felt a thing. That's true. Yeah, it would have been a day off compared to uh, <laughs> Luna and Sherry. Yeah, Bre 
Brett's breasts aren't as heavy as Sherry's. It's probably true. It's also oh, true. They, they, they were. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Giant Gonzalez versus L.A. Gore. So I like Giant jogging down to the ring. He's a spry giant. Well. And then he gets to the ring to rest L.A. Gore. You know what the amazing thing about this bodysuit, this airbrushed, muscled bodysuit? He still needs a tan. Yeah. He's a pale <laughs> yeti. By the way, was this tape before WrestleMania? Because he went back to the 70s shag. I presume uh, this was suit. I presume this was tape before WrestleMania. Actually, Rob <laughs> okay. might know. Was this was this pre-tape before WrestleMania? I think so. Okay. Um all I know is that I was not invited to WrestleMania. I don't know why. Um <clears throat> but uh his interesting uh, piece of trivia, LA Gore. Um, when he wrestled that night, he uh, he came to me backstage. He says, I don't know if you remember me. Uh, and he introduced himself. He was a bouncer at a comedy club I used to work at. Oh, yeah. Really? That's cool. Yeah. Wow. How about I didn't that? name him, though. You know, I remember after uh, after WrestleMania, they did that uh, they did that storyline where, like, you were stuck in Vegas. You yes. were, like, you were trapped there and you couldn't get back. And I actually, because yeah. I, I I didn't know until uh, last week, actually, that uh, this was your, Raw 13 was your final Raw. So mm-hmm. as I was watching that one, I was like, maybe this is how they write off Rob Bartlett. Like, he went to Vegas and never came back. Like, he just got, you know, sucked into the vortex of Vegas or something like that. But then you I eventually think... did come back. But the, the point is, when you were talking about being lost in Vegas, that's when it had occurred to me, well, he wasn't even at WrestleMania. <laughs> oh, what's he doing in Vegas if he wasn't at the show? I thought for sure they'd want to put you in a toga. I, I was. It seemed like a natural to me. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, L.A. Gore was a former bouncer, and he bounced here when the giant choke slammed him and pinned him. <laughs> yeah, not much to it. Yeah. Nope. We got a Luna promo on Sherry. I never realized at the time how much Luna was like a. I guess this came after, but she was down that same promo path as the Ultimate Warrior. Okay. Just spout out a bunch of nonsense, do a really wacky Gibberish. Voice, gibberish. I walked out a goddess. You had to put your nose in my business. The pain, the anguish, you're mine. Let's see. Last week I tore your flesh, your clothes, your soul. From this day forth, I will hunt your very breath. Very soon I will wipe you from this earth. I will be the goddess of the squared circle. Ah, Excuse Was me. Was that a Shakespearean sonnet? <laughs> I had to go back and check. I wanted to offer her a lozenge when she was done. <laughs> Craig. It is, no, she has her throat, Brian. No, her throat. Oh, a lozenge. A, oh. oh, my God, Brian. What do you think he said? I thought he said uh, a sausage. Uh, oh, well, no. <laughs> it's disgusting. Lozenge. I lozenge. got it. A breath mint might have been more appropriate. Thank you. Thank Jeez. you. Jeez. Tatanka versus Art Thomas. No, not that one. I was going to say, when he came out, I was like, holy smokes, I got Sailor Art. Oh, wait, that's not That's good. not Sailor Art Thomas. He looked like a power plant guy. He was all jacked up and not very good. And they absolutely fucked up an Irish whip. And Tatanka hit some chops and won with a Samoan drop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of squashes on this show. But not this next one. Dude. <laughs> it should oh, Holy been. smokes. Money Incorporated versus the Beverly Brothers. You know what's funny about this match is uh, somehow we had a two-hour match and a one-hour Raw. I don't even know how they did that. <laughs> and uh, I was watching I was watching Raw last night. Raw's, uh, I don't know if you watch Raw nowadays, Rob. And if you do, you probably don't watch the whole thing because it's three hours. But uh, they did a, a three-way tag match in the opener, which is actually a really good match. It was a 27-minute pay-per-view caliber match. It was really good. But this took up the entire first hour of Raw. Now, the good news is the match was good. This match here with Money, Inc. and the Beverly Brothers, I don't know how many times in my lifetime I have seen a match with two teams that are this good that had a match this bad. It was almost inconceivable. This match went on forever, and they didn't do anything. <laughs> They laid on the mat, and they laid in these chin locks, and they laid there. And it was weird because, like, you know, first Money, Inc., they were the baby faces. It was like a baby face in peril. (laughs) 
IRS guy. That yeah. was weird. Yes. <laughs> tax man in peril. <laughs> yeah. Save the tax man. Oh, yeah. I, oh my God, I got taxes to pay. Make sure that guy's all right. And then, of course, <laughs> you know, the tax man then gets the heat, and he's beating on the Beverly Brothers. And I'm like, how long is this match? And it just kept going. Holy smokes. The funny thing is, at the very beginning of the match, McMahon says, I don't know why anybody would want to see this. I was like, fool, you booked this. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he, he was burying his own product. Yeah. His own match. That he sat through No it. one wants to see this, he says. So I think, trying to watch this in, 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 in 2022 eyes and try to make sense of it all, I think their plan was, we're both heel teams. We'll go in there. We'll wait for the fans to cheer for somebody. And that team will be the baby face. We'll go from there. 30 minutes later, nary a cheer was heard. (laughs) And they said, fuck it, let's just pin somebody. (laughs) And so Bo bonked into Blake and Ted pinned Blake with a schoolboy. Yeah. That was a long one. That was a slog. That match was almost as long as Rob's entire tenure on Monday Night Raw, (laughs) actually. Excruciatingly long, this match. Holy smokes. Hours. This match just went hours. It may still be going on somewhere. Yeah. But, you know, they kept breaking for commercial during the match, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. And and every time we break for commercial, Vince would lean over and say, Can you believe the athleticism? (laughs) He said that to you? Yeah. You gotta gotta give these guys credit. Yeah. They weren't doing anything, of course. I mean,. Sure. Honest to God, there was a lack of athleticism. That was a problem with this match. They right. were laying there on the mat in chin locks. I was dying for some athleticism. Was Vince always just sitting there talking to you, trying to put over the product? Um, I think he was trying to help me. You know, trying to get me jazzed, or trying to, you know, try, yeah. trying to lead me into something. Or okay. <laughs> we'd go to commercial, and he kind of lean over and say. You know, jump in whenever you want. <laughs> Long stretches where I wouldn't say anything, yeah. you know. Well, well you know, it's, it's funny because nowadays he gets in the headset and he yells at everybody. That's what he does to the announcers now. He, he yells are. at them over the headset, and, like, many of them have quit. Like, Mick Foley quit because he was getting yelled at by Vince too much in the headset. So it's interesting to hear, like, the way that he essentially produced his announcers because, like, he was sitting there with you guys back then as compared to, like, what he does today. It was pretty because you didn't tell him you were going to be Vince, right? You just did it. Oh, I just did it because he was, you know, I knew he wasn't going to be there. You know, t- to be fair, I never had to clear anything. I just did, you know. He he gave me free reign, you know, for better or worse. Wow. <laughs> you know? And as it turned out, the 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 one time that it really worked was when I did him. You know, it's the the you know the the crew. I was legend with the crew from that you know point forward. <laughs> This crew uh, the next too. Three for episodes, but um, you know, he says it, it started with me making fun of him at the benefit, and it kind of ended with me making fun of him on <laughs> on the show. So it came full circle. Yes, squared circle. Yeah, indeed. Vince interviews Bret Hart, filling in for Rob Bartlett. Right. So this is Bret's first appearance after he lost the title to Yokozuna. He says, "I've always been always been an underdog, even when I was champion." I was an underdog. I have lost titles before. I lost the tag titles twice. I have lost the Intercontinental twice. And every time I lost the title, the skeptic said it was done. That's as good as he was going to get. Well, they were wrong then, and they're wrong now. So this couldn't have been taped before Mania. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. 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 At least this part. Yeah. He vows he's going straight back to the top. He's going to meet a hit list, starting with a narcissist Lex Luger. And they have been talking about this for weeks. They finally no, showed it. Narcissist. Uh, pardon me. Narcissist. Narcissist. Like Luger. You got to say it the way Heenan used to say it. Narcissist. <laughs> so they had talked about this for weeks. This is the first time we actually saw it. They're at like a charity breakfast or something. And Brett's up there. He's got the, 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 the Beatles jacket on. He's doing a speech at a podium. And for no reason, the narcissist comes up and just... <laughs> Waffles him in the back of his head with, a, with the back of the head with an elbow. What a dick! <laughs> Just for no reason. And so Brett vows here he's going to deal with this narcissist, and then he's going to <laughs> regain his title, even if he has to beat the immortal Hulk Hogan. A lot of stuff that didn't happen here. <laughs> What's it called when you foreshadow something but it never happens? Besides uh, just WWE, a red herring. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Bam Bam Bigelow versus Phil Apollo. 
So Bam Bam started wrestling Phil Apollo, as I noted, and Savage is on commentary saying, man, this the competition competition here keeps getting better. Look at Friar Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. God. In the middle of this match. I lost it about Friar Ferguson. In the middle of this match, Doink walks out from the locker room. Dork. Dork walks out from the locker room, looks around, and walks back. <laughs> Not impressed, apparently, with the match. No. I don't know why. I was enjoying this match. Uh, Bam, it was Bam Bam killing a guy. Yeah. What could be better than that? He squashed him with a senton. Yes. And I mentioned mm-hmm. this when he did the, the Undertaker match. This is like the biggest I have ever seen Bam Bam. And so when he squashed him, he squashed him flat. When did uh, Dork's mini me Dank enter the picture? <laughs> Sometime. Uh, in the year. I think I'm it's by sure. Survivor Series. Yeah. So yeah. Something over the summer or something. Uh, okay. I think. It was, uh, it was prior to, I mean, post my reign there, yeah. I guess. Mm. God, you'd have had material for years with Dink. No, I just love little people, so I, I would have been in my glory, you know? Okay. So Bam Bam goes to the headbutt, and he goes to beat him up more, when who should make the save but Friar Ferguson? <laughs> yeah. Who last week we saw debut. I thought for sure this guy was a heel. He would be a complete prick last week. <laughs> and here, here he comes, drunken Friar to the rescue. Yeah. And he makes a save, and he starts flashing the crowd again, all thanks mm-hmm. to Rob. And he starts spraying this guy with water out of his jug. What's that thing called? Excuse me? A flask? Yeah, no, it's, I guess it's a flask. There's a name for it, I think. Yeah, the weird uh, flask that looks like a little banjo or something mm-hmm. like that. He starts spraying water banjo. everywhere. Oh, it's not a banjo. Yeah. No, it looks so. like a banjo. Oh, yeah, it's like the, the, the goat skin. The holy yeah, water thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Let's see if I can find anything on it's this. It's supposed to be wine. I think that that was. Oh, is that what it was? Uh, Yeah, it's supposed to be one. I see. Sacrificial one, obviously. He sacrificed it all over Bam Bam. Sure did. (laughs) God. Sounds lewd. (laughs) Anyway. Bam Bam Bam's not a guy you really want to mess with. Uh, No. Don't say. Tattoos of flames on his fucking head. You really got to, you know, give yourself a little pause. Try, try, Try to stay on his good side. Well, to be honest, Rob, you don't know how many people have tattoos on their head and then just grew their hair. That's true. Like me. That's true. I have a heavily tattooed head. Just can't tell. I only have one tattoo. It's <laughs> on it's on my belly. It's uh, and it's an arrow pointing downward right. and in old English lettering it says for the ladies. <laughs> so um How's that worked out for you there? I've Rob? never I, wanted anything I, to be I, true more. I keep my shirt on. So <laughs> Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I didn't so, notice it when you were getting beat up by Sherry and uh, Luna. No, I just I kept a t shirt on. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. sorry, Rob, go ahead. No. Yeah. Well, Fryer kicks Bam Bam out of the ring. And they go to the break. And they come back. Fryer's just still in the ring. It just spewing that stuff everywhere. Blessing it, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> and they advertise for next week what a mean event this is gonna be. Crush versus Narcissus. I forgot about Crush. For the rest of your days, we're going to hear <laughs> Narcissist. What, what do you have to say about Crush there, Rob? I, I forgot completely about him. I, I just, yeah, most he was one do. of the guys that kind of slipped through the cracks in my memory. Um, okay. I remember, he was the Hawaiian guy, right? A yes. giant Hawaiian, yes. yes yeah, sure. mahalo, Randy. I remember him saying that. He did say that a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He said ma- mahalo a lot. And he never addressed me. He would only address Randy and Vince. Oh, <laughs> oh. I didn't oh. exist. He big yeah, time you. Fine. God, can you imagine big timing Rob Bartlett? Especially hey, you when you're what? crush. But well, he's sorry now. Well, well he's somewhere. sorry now. Well, didn't they name the turtle from Finding Nemo after him? I think that actually God damn, well, it was right. Crush the Turtle. Yeah. Right. I don't know if it was that. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. The Stoner mm-hmm. Turtle? Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The Stoner oh, okay. Turtle. <clears throat> okay. My daughter's watched that movie a thousand times. I've never seen it once. The Turtle is a Stoner? Yeah, man. He's, he's like a surfer dude. He's kind of like I a Spicoli. See. A weed know. smoking turtle? Yeah. Right. A kind seaweed of, yeah. smoking turtle. Yeah. I need to and it, watch you know, it show. joints are really hard to light underwater, so you got to give them credit. <laughs> that is true. That's a, that's a dedicated stoner. Yes. They're yes. very dedicated. Thank God for edibles. <laughs> <laughs> the fish flavored edibles. Right. Is that the end of the show, Vinny? Was that it? That's the end of the that's show. It. Oh, God. I watched <laughs> it two weeks ago. I totally forgot everything about it except that money ink match. And it ends with it, not a bang, but a whimper. It really was, Rob. I can't believe. So, so like, did you know this was your last show, or was it after this show that we were like, ah, I'm not coming back next week? 
I had kind of entertained the idea prior to the show that this might be my last, and I was kind of debating whether or not I should do something. Oh you know, man, really outrageous! But I, mm-hmm. I kind of chickened out, and in retrospect. It probably was the right thing to do, but I, I still wish I had done something. Well, crazy. I mean, quite frankly, they haven't called you, dude. So if you would have done something uh, like out- outlandish, it's possible you'd be in their Hall of Fame right now. You know, th- that would be no greater honor. You know, I've I've won a Drama Desk Award, but being in the in the in the Wrestling Hall of Fame would just supersede everything. You know, I got two Emmys, but no, Wrestling Hall of Fame, man, that would be. What more could a boy want Dude, there ain't to be much. in the Wrestling Hall of Fame? Well, you know, I know a guy. I, hey, I, 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 don't know, uh, I don't know about that, but you know what I can tell you, Rob? What? Right. I can tell you as we uh, prepare to wrap up today that we, here at this website, mm-hmm. have what I like to call the Hall of Awesome. Hmm, that's right. And Vinny and I are the, the panel as well as Craig. Mm-hmm. And I believe that after today's show, you are going to go into a Hall of Fame, Rob. You're going to go to the Brian and Vinny Matt Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Aye, 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 aye. Somebody didn't say aye. Uh, no. Brian, did you say aye? I did. Aye. Vinny aye. did. Aye. We don't aye. care about aye. Craig. Aye. Yeah. Oh, oh, there he did. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, there he goes. Very aye. prestigious. You get nothing except right. the uh, the knowledge that you're in there. There's a, there's a okay. forum with a few hundred users who know you're in there. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. You know what? I, I'm, uh, there are no words. There are no words. It matches Gentlemen, the award, have, actually. I am I'm speechless, you know. Uh, not unlike, you know, nine of the 13 weeks that I was <laughs> on the show. Nothing, nothing to add of any value. <clears throat> well, you added a lot today, Rob, and we appreciate it. Absolutely. I want to thank you pleasure, very much this for uh, fun. doing this show. And maybe one of these days when we review Raw 1 for like the eighth time, we'll have you on again. <laughs> For some reason, like well, every now and then we'll review a show, and then everyone just tells us, you know, you reviewed that show like four years ago. I, like, well. I did a watch along with Sean Mooney on his podcast. Oh, goodness. It was, it was the first time I'd seen it since we'd done it. And, uh, oh, man, that was painful. <laughs> man, that, that Sean painful. Mooney looks great, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know what was more painful. I mean, me, you know, or or Heenan dressed as a rabbi and 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 a woman. I don't know which one was more painful, but uh, I tell you, Heenan, God bless him, God rest his soul. What a great guy! What a funny motherfucker! He was <laughs> he awesome. Was, he really was. He really, really was a sweetheart too. Just you know. After I did the vids for the whole show, he, he comes up to me in the backstage dressing room and goes, Marlon, you got balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you did have balls to do that one, especially without telling him. I figured right. he had to know. Learned something no new every day. They were fit to be tied. They had no idea. Because, I, you know, well, what could they say? I was just spouting gibberish and ending every sentence with, Monday Night Raw! Well, it was fantastic. And hey, listen, we're gonna wrap it up here today. We got to uh, we got to get everyone to bed here today. But uh, uh, at the Robio R O B I O at the Robio on Twitter, uh, Rob Bartlett Radio Comedy Hour. Uh, links to the uh, Facebook page and uh, all sorts of stuff up there. So cameo. I always don't forget the cameo. Yeah, that's right, cameo. What's what's uh, just Rob Bartlett? Mine's F4W yeah. online, so I don't know what everyone yeah, else. It's, it's Rob Bartlett on Cameo. Rob Bartlett yeah, on Cameo, yeah. yeah. You guys, hopefully you get a bunch of Cameos tomorrow. because That would be great. That would be awesome. That would be great because, you know, this whole comedy thing is not really working out that great these days. So. <laughs> well, <yeah>. uh, <laughs> not unlike the uh, 13 weeks on Raw. Uh, um, not a lot of funny shit going on nowadays. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. It's hard to make people laugh when the world is fucking falling apart. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But thank God we have... Little oases. Thank God we've hope. got raw, retro raw to talk about. Right, and and <laughs> you guys, you know, to to you know go back to the golden age and and remind everybody of what it was like when when wrestling was wrestling, when it was uncut, uncooked, and uncensored. Hey! hey, went full circle today. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Of course, thanks My all of our uh, Twitch homies, top tier YouTube subscribers. We'll talk to you again, everybody, after a while. All right, guys. Take care. Good night. Adios.